I hope yesterday's uh, reading or uh, reflection got you thinking and open to the fact that God wants to breathe that same word into your heart. Do not be afraid. Well, we want to do a little Bible study, just a brief one on a couple verses at the end of Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. This is called the Peace Awakening. You know, it's dawned on me as over the last two years as I've prepared for Christmas how we've lifted Christmas out of its rugged historical context. We've sanitized the characters of the first Christmas, lifting them out of their context and relegating them to the picture-perfect Christmas cards we send to one another. Images that uh, capture the idyllic scene and yet nothing of the difficulty those first Christmas characters dealt with. Well, these characters faced the deep disappointments, disorienting fears, and daunting challenges. These unsettling circumstances blanketed their lives in darkness. Darkness. But then something unexpected happened. A light penetrated that darkness. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared to them. Morning light. Morning light light broke through their personal darkness with the shining promise of a miracle. In scripture, when it talks about morning light, it doesn't do it very often, but when it does, it's always referring to the coming of the Messiah. In fact, we discover this in a couple verses at the end of Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. Because of God's tender mercy, morning light from heaven is about to break in upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide us to the path of peace. Oh, I find such insight in those words. Allow God to meet you in these verses, and I believe you'll experience a Christmas awakening. Awaken yourself to God's tender mercies. The word for tender means the innermost parts the innermost parts of mercy, here referring to God's innermost parts. Rest in God's innermost parts of mercy, the mercy that is deep and as certain as God is holy. We read in John 11 that God grieves with, grieves with us in our brokenness, weeps with us in our pain, as he wept for his dear friend Lazarus when he died. And that chapter mentions that Jesus wept bitterly, deeply moved in spirit and troubled. It uses the same word as is used here in Luke 1. Troubled in the deepest, innermost parts of his being. He was moved and troubled. So deep within himself, God loves us so much that God sent his own son to rescue us. Born in a wooden manger, he died on a wooden cross, all to save us. Allow this Christmas, one writer has said, to deepen your belief that on the other side of your brokenness, that on the other side of your grief and loss, there are possibilities of new beginnings. Indeed, awaken to God's tender mercies. But awaken as well to God's arrival in our midst. The morning light is about to break in. The morning light from heaven is about to break in upon us to give light to those who sit in the darkness. Remember, morning light is always a sign and a symbol of God's coming and his coming of the Messiah. And so I ask you this morning, are you trapped in darkness? Are you in the midst of the dark night of the soul as prophets of old have said? Are your circumstances entrapping you in hopelessness? Well, wait patiently. Help is on the way. God is about to do something to break through even your darkness. Morning light will soon break in and surprise you much in the same way it surprised those in the first Christmas. 
much in the same way it surprised Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the characters of the first Christmas. God, compelled by his love, comes as morning light to rescue us, to infuse our lives with fresh hope and peace. God is able to pierce through the darkness and shine his holy, liberating light into our hearts. God hears our silent cries for help. God breaks into our darkness. Well, folks, God's arrival is the true game changer. When God shows up in your life and in mine, any situation that once seemed helpless and hopeless is now burst open with new possibilities. I just want to tell you, a breakthrough awaits you as you awaken your heart to the morning light of God's arrival in your life. Amen and amen. But there's another awakening. It's the awakening of God's healing peace. God sent Jesus to guide us into the path of peace. Let's face it, brokenness in life can cause our lives to be unsettled, our hearts to be uh, unsettled. God comes to us in our Lord to guide us to the path of peace. This peace is not merely the absence of stress or strain, it's the presence of God in the midst of it all. Peace comes, as we've said, from the biblical word shalom. It means more than what we often associate it as. It literally means wholeness flourishing, vitality, and well-being. Jesus' mission was to guide our wandering lives, our wandering hearts, wandering in darkness, to find our way to the Prince of Peace and receive his peace as a result. God came to take our broken lives and put them back together again. This peace, this put-back-together-again life that Zechariah spoke of in these two verses in, in Luke chapter 1. We see glimpses of it throughout the entire Christmas story. For instance, in chapter 2 of Luke's Gospel, suddenly an angel of the Lord was around them. The armies of heaven praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth with those whom God is well pleased. So I'm going to invite you, reflect, ponder, pray over these two verses. In fact, I'd encourage you to memorize them. And may God help you with a Christmas awakening. Where are you wandering in the darkness? Where does your life need morning light to break through? Well, maybe this Christmas, in the midst of all that we're dealing with, will be the best place, the best time to experience that morning light shining in it in your life. May it be so in Christ's name. God go with you.